After traveling around Mexico with my friends here, we want to give you some Mexico travel tips. Some essentials you need before you go to Mexico. Or if you're already planning your trip, this might help you. We have been to Chiapas and Mexico City, so Mexico City is probably the place where everyone starts. And I would say you should definitely spend some days in Mexico City. Do you agree? You live there. <laughs> of course you do. I would say most people end up going to Cancun, Cancun, or Playa del Carmen, or Tulum. It's all in the state of Quintana Roo, is the name of the state, all on the Caribbean coast. If you want to explore the Caribbean coast, it's beautiful, but Mexico is a giant, a giant place, and there is seriously the highest density of cool stuff I've seen anywhere in the world in this country. For me, Chiapas was cool because Chiapas is different than the rest of Mexico. Mexico is, there's a lot of desert, there's a lot of mountains and things like that. And Chiapas has like this crazy blue water and jungle and it kind of feels a little bit more like Central America. So you kind of get that Central American vibe and yeah, I think it's just a perfect addition. The cool thing about Mexico is its location. So in matters of like the time, when is the best time to go, it's actually a pretty open. Any time of the year, you will find a spot where you can hit the beach for example. So in the winter, there's very little Mexican tourism. In the summer, there is Mexican tourism in the, same, in the sense that Mexicans travel the country. You flip that, there's lots of what we call snowbirds, people from Canada, United States, that come down to travel, mostly for Christmas, around that time, March break, and mostly just go to the tourist destinations. My opinion is if you want to see more of the country, go in the Mexican off season, so our winter, and go to places other than the tourist destinations. Because then you'll have an entire country that's a little bit cold. There are some very cold spots here in the country and Mexicans generally don't like cold. So if you want to explore places that are 10 degrees Celsius, usually you're going to be there by yourself. About even 20 degrees Celsius. Yeah, I, guess the, I guess the other thing to think about is hurricane season. Which yeah. maybe really only affects the area around, I guess, the Yucatan around late August, early September especially, maybe try to avoid that time of year, maybe, if you're going to that part of this country. We did a road trip from Mexico City. We drove through Puebla, Oaxaca, and then spent most of our time in Chiapas. So you have been in Mexico before and you also tried other modes of transportation. We will be flying back tomorrow actually uh, by plane uh, to Mexico City and that was not really expensive. It was like about a hundred US dollars to go from the capital city of Chiapas back to Mexico City. So there are several ways of getting around. We chose the rental car. Um, what other ways could you recommend? Uh, obviously public bus. You can get around <laughs> with public bus throughout the country, but it's a long journey. And quite often it's not that much more expensive to fly, I don't think, but if you're looking for that real, real local experience, especially some of the shorter journeys on bus can be a lot of fun and a good way to kind of immerse yourself with the locals a little bit more. Most people do arrive in Yucatan Peninsula where Cancun is. That whole peninsula and pretty much the whole country is united by the system of buses called ADO, A-D-O, and they're not the cheapest buses, but they've got AC, they're super safe, and you can get around that way if you want to fly. But like Steve said, we booked flights last minute. They were not so expensive, they could even get cheaper than that. But uh, it's an easy country to get around, and especially the highways. We road trip from Mexico City all the way to Chiapas. It was like eight hours, 10 hours or something all together. The, the highways were beautiful for the most part. The, the, the thing we noticed right away is when you book online, you book a rental car online, it costs about a dollar a day. And that's because the rental agents don't make any money from the rental. When you get there, they tell you, yeah, you're only paying one dollar a day for rental, but you also need to buy like $35 a day worth of insurance. And there's ways around it if you buy your own insurance. You can buy your own insurance, your own liability insurance, your own collision insurance and show them that. But even if you do that, they're gonna take a huge hold on your credit card. Most rental car companies take like $250, $300. In Mexico City, they were trying to take like $2,500 of a hold 
if you didn't want any insurance. So that's one thing to look for. Shop around a little bit, buy your own insurance from back home, but just be prepared for a massive, massive hold on your credit card. You need to have really strong nerves <laughs> yeah. to get through traffic in Mexico. I'm, uh, I'm 97 years old now <laughs> after driving through Mexico. And to be honest, it's not really that bad. They're, in general, they're a little bit overly aggressive drivers that they don't really follow the rules. And you can kind of get away with doing that yourself. So it can kind of be a little bit liberating, you know, not signaling as often and kind of sh like hovering over two lanes. But what gets me, <laughs> And what got all of us were the topes. <laughs> and maybe Jody wants to elaborate on what a tope is. A tope is a speed bump. And in Mexico, some of them are huge and some of them are small, but all of them, nearly all of them, are completely hidden. You just don't see them coming and then you just go boom. <laughs> there was at least a couple times that I think we got these guys in the back seat and hit their heads on the top of the car. <laughs> it was serious. They always hide the topes in like the shadows and they're never signed. It's <sighs> You live in fear driving in Mexico, not of banditos, not of bandits, not of other drivers, but of topes. Another thing you should keep in mind when traveling around Mexico in a car is all the quotas, like the, the, the paid highways which you should actually take mm -hmm. in matters of safety. You shouldn't drive at night. I think this is something we can all agree on to be on the safe side. So keep that in mind when planning a road trip that you have to pay. If you're traveling in, in the States to get a bit more tourism, they, the highways are really big, really safe, but you're gonna be spending like probably 20 US for a five hour road trip to be on the, the paid highways, which we always do. I always recommend you do that because the free highways, sure, they're free, but they're longer, they're twistier, and if you're gonna run into trouble, it's gonna be on the free highways. And there's topes on the other highways. <laughs> big risk everyone's worried about is getting kidnapped or being in the middle of drug violence and that stuff does happen on occasion but mostly to other Mexicans almost exclusively to other, other Mexicans and the, the, the violence towards tourists is I have never heard of anything happening to any tourist after being here for one year actually there was one time someone said they got mugged as they were walking back downtown with their cell phone out texting somebody and they got mugged from the cell phone which is very common anywhere in the world but all of the big fears you hear about are mostly just hyped up things to do with narcos, which is drug on drug, druggy on druggy violence. It's not gonna happen to the after tourists. I'm one of those people that I'm a little bit naive. I travel kind of with my big camera out and I film everything and I kind of have a bit of a view like this. But I still, I don't think I've, you know, I felt anything in Mexico on any of my trips that was anything except for friendly by people. I never felt threatened at any time. But we, in Mexico City, we went to places that people would consider dangerous, which is rural Xochimilco, not, we, we did the trajineros, the, the boats, but then went to the actual Pulcaria. town, yeah. around the Pulcaria, it's supposed to be a little bit rough, as well as the lucha, luchadores, the wrestlers, that area is supposed to be quite rough as well. With our cameras, and I mean, we were careful, but there was no, we didn't really feel anything. And also around Plaza Garibaldi is quite dangerous as well. I think one of the things is in places like Mexico, Mexico City, you don't see a lot of people like just cruising to try to rob people. You see more like crime of opportunity sort of thing. Like for example, I have my big old camera and somebody might be watching me from a distance and wait till I get careless and set my camera behind me and then they come and grab it when I'm not looking. I think that's the stuff you have to look out for. So it's more just being like smart and not being careless and you'll be fine. Other people were kind of, oh, you're going to Mexico, are you scared? People asked me if I was scared, especially as a woman coming to Mexico. Mm -hmm. Honestly, I, I've not felt scared here at all. I've not felt any less safe than I ever did in London. I'm from London. I feel a whole lot safer in Mexico City than London. There's been no harassment. I think just what you guys have said, you just need to keep your wits about you, common sense, like in any place, any city. I think Mexico is cheap. I just don't think it's as cheap as, as like Central America. I think it's more of actually a mid-range budget. I think food, for example, you can get for really cheap. You can get tacos that cost a dollar, a meal that costs four, three dollars. 
but if you're going mid-range food, I think it is kind of expensive. I think that accommodation is, I don't think it's ultra, ultra cheap. I think that you're looking as an individual of a budget of maybe like $50 a day in total. $50 a day. I think that if you were ultra budget, if you were one of those people that is almost a hippie that carries a stick with a little bag on the shoulder, you could probably do $30 a day and get diarrhea a lot, but you could do it. So I would say 30 on the cheapest end, 50 is like a sensible end, and then 70 if you wanted a little bit more luxury. Mexico is a country with a really diverse food culture. We called this whole trip taco trip because this is actually what we ate the most, more or less. What was your favorite food in Mexico? I um, mean, easily, easily, I know the tacos <laughs> at Los Parados <laughs> and the pastor ones. Oh, so good. And the that, first advertising that place has ever had. Uh, <laughs> if you go to Mexico City, mark it on your map, go to Los Parados. This episode was not sponsored by Los Parados. In Calle Monterrey in, Rome, in Roma Sur. Your favorite? I, I love, love, love Mexican food, um, especially tongue tacos. I know that's probably gross for a lot of people. I didn't think I'd like them until the first time I had them. They're one of my favorites, tacos de lengua. One thing that we had this trip that I've never had before, because each state and region has a lot of local specialties you can't find anywhere else, was called texcalate, tlaxcalate. Tezcalate. Tez, the drink. Tezcalate, uh -huh. which is a drink, it's only found in Chiapas, and it's like cinnamon, cloves, a little bit of chocolate. Orange stuff, chocolate powder, all mixed up in this really orange chocolate milk type thing. It's not chocolate milk, but it, anyway, it's really, really nice. But this country, like I said, if you're if you're an adventurous eater, is endless, 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 endless opportunities for you here. Jody, I really enjoyed the mole. The mole. Which I'm totally, is... I'm totally with Jody on that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's uh, it's impossible to describe, but it's kind of just a. It looks, it looks at first, it looks kind of weird and disgusting, <laughs> but it's really nice. It's one of the most complex sauces in the world. So there's mole negro, which you guys had, but you have only touched the tip of the iceberg. There's like, I don't know, 20 different kinds of moles. To sum it up, come hungry. <laughs> <laughs> Let's finish this off with some essential tips for traveling to Mexico. My first essential tip would be you should learn some Spanish before you go because apart from maybe the Yucatan Peninsula where you're surrounded by other English-speaking tourists, everybody will speak English or at least a certain amount of English to sell you stuff. But when you're traveling through the rest of Mexico, you should be aware that you need to speak Spanish so people can understand what you want, what you want to eat, what you want to drink, or if you want to negotiate prices. Other tips? Do you expect some kind of gastrointestinal situation to, to, to varying degrees of severity? That's just kind of how what happens here, whether you drink some bad water or whether you eat a bad taco. Um, it happens to everybody. Not, it's not always code red disaster. Sometimes, maybe it is, but expect some rumbling in your tummy and some gas. So I always say bring some Pepto-Bismol, bring some Imodium, just to deal with that and not let it ruin your trip. But come here expecting you get a little bit sick in the first week. Because we all did, right? But we all did? Be aware, yeah. be aware that Mike eats a lot of strange food. You <clears> and you should it. too! You should, you, should, you should check that out on his channel. He visits <laughs> strange places and eats strange kind of food. Are tongue tacos weird? They are weird. <laughs> <laughs> Over to Brendan. Um, you probably have some tips for the photographers, do you? My tip, okay, a tip for photographers is that everything's closed when you want to be taking pictures. <laughs> Most places in Mexico, even if it's a waterfall or valley or canyon or something like that, they only seem to be open between 8 and 5 and as photographers we want to be taking pictures at 7 in the morning and 7 at night and it's a battle. And the other thing is, they consider tripods professional gear and it, it and if at any of the sites you want to use a tripod, you have to pay like, I think it's like 10, well I think for tripods it's less, I think for tripods it's like 5,000 pesos, so 250 euros just to use your tripod, and obviously you're not going to take it. So, get used to shooting handheld, 
get used to shooting in the middle of the day. Maybe come to the site super early in the morning so you at least have them all to yourself and the light's still soft. And maybe pack a gimbal or something to help you stabilize a little bit. It's a bit of a battle shooting photos in any park or nature or something like that, but we still got lots of really cool photos. Yeah. So don't let that deter you. My number one tip would be to always try and carry some change, especially five pesos and oh, 10 yeah. pesos. Tipping culture is a big thing here, but more importantly, you have to pay to use the toilets and they cost five pesos pretty much everywhere you go. And you need to take your own toilet paper. All right, guys, that is it from our side. Have fun traveling Mexico and make sure to check out my friends here. Jody is doing vlogs and guides about Mexico. Brandon, a lot of photography tips on his channel. As and as said, Mike, strange and amazing places in Mexico. And the world. And the world. See you soon.